formed out of pre-existing rocks that have been altered below Earth's surface. Subjecting rocks to pressure, heat, and fluid can change the composition and texture of rocks through a process called metamorphism. A parent rock is a rock that a particular metamorphic rock was formed out of. All metamorphic rocks have parent rocks because they form out of other rocks. This is inherent in their definition. Texture and mineral changes occur during this process. This video is going to focus on metamorphic textures and the classification of metamorphic rocks. The texture is very evident in this circular image here of a metamorphic rock face that is popular for rock climbing. Texture is how the effects of, metamorphic, of metamorphism on rock are expressed through appearance. Texture analysis is important because it can be a powerful tool used in understanding the metamorphic processes. Texture includes the grain size, the grain shape, and the grain orientation. We'll start with going over some terms that can be useful in understanding metamorphic texture. Fabric refers to rocks in a way similar to how the word fabric in English refers to the arrangement of the fibers or threads in our clothing. Most igneous and sedimentary rocks have random fabric, whereas metamorphic rocks can develop preferred orientation after being subjected to direct pressure. Random fabric can be seen here in the orientation of these grains. Each one is arranged randomly, whereas in preferred orientation, after being subjected to direct pressure, the grains sort of get compressed and or it can also be related to the magnetic fields. They get aligned, so they're relatively pointed in the same direction, but you can see it's still not perfectly parallel to each other. So that is what is referred to as preferred orientation. The two big categories of metamorphic rocks are categorized by this foliated or non-foliated pattern. Foliated means that the rock has preferred orientation which is then physically evident in the planar texture, such as in this example. Whereas non-foliated rocks maintain the original random fabric, which is common in parent materials of igneous or sedimentary rocks, even though they're no longer the same parent material, they have been altered, but because they were either under um, contained pressure or they would, or they formed differently. Um, they don't. They do not experience the direct pressure, and therefore have random fabric, not preferred orientation. Like igneous and metamorphic rocks, metamorphic like igneous and sedimentary rocks. Metamorphic rocks are classified based on mineral composition and texture. Classifying metamorphic rocks is broken into two main groups, as stated in the previous slide, slide foliated and non-foliated. Beyond this, they can be further classified according to the mineral content, the parent material, and the grain size. Mineral content and grain size vary with the conditions of pressure and temperature that were present in the location when the metamorphism process occurred. <coughs> foliated rocks are listed here in order of <coughs> excuse me of low grade to high grade with um slate being the lowest grade and gneiss being the highest grade low grade metamorphic rocks typically form below 400 degrees celsius or 750 degrees fahrenheit whereas high grade rocks form at much greater temperatures of up to 1000 degrees celsius or 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Low-grade metamorphic rocks typ typically also have a uh, more fine grain um, than those formed at the higher temperatures because the, uh, the metamorphic rocks formed under higher temperature form much more quickly and end up becoming more coarse-grained. Foliated rocks can be further classified by mineral composition or parent material, but those names are usually self-explanatory. For example, granite gneiss would be gneiss that is made out of granite. So this video won't 
focus too heavily on those because, as I said, they are very self-explanatory. So the first metamorphic rock we're going to take a look at is slate. Its texture is called slaty, and slate is typically composed of clays, micas, and chlorite. It is very fine-grained and splits, splits easily into flat pieces. Um, it often will come off in sheets if you break it apart. The parent material is mud rock, claystone, and volcanic ash. The next lowest grade of um, foliated metamorphic rock is phyllite. Phyllite, like slate, comes from shale. However, it forms at a higher temperature. So phyllite can occur when slate is further met metamorphized. As you can see with these arrows, it can form either directly out of the parent materials or from slate that has been further metamorphized. Schist is typically composed of mica, chlorite, quartz, talc, hornblende, garnet, sourlite, and graphite. It has a pretty distinct foliation, which you can see by looking here at the sides of this piece of schist, it gets a bit stripy or, as we would say, banded. Um, while this rock type is schist, the texture description is called schistos, so that's how you would describe a rock with this texture. Um, the foliation is pretty distinct and you can even see um, visible mi minerals. The parent material of schist is mud rock, carbonates, and bathic igneous rocks. Like slate and phyllite, schist comes from metamorphized shale but at an even higher grade. Gneiss is the highest grade of foliated metamorphic rock, and you can see it has the most distinct stripes here, um, and it's got the most contrast of dark and light banding. Um, this rock type is gneiss, and rocks that exhibit, exhibit this texture are described as gneissos. Um, gneiss is typically composed of quartz, feldspar, hornblende, and mica. It's a, it's a high metamorphic grade um, which results is what results in these clearly visible light and dark bands. That means it's um, formed at the highest temperature of close to 1000 degrees Celsius or 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. The parent material is mud rock, sandstone, and felsic igneous rock. Next, we'll take a look at the non-foliated classification of metamorphic rocks. Some rocks, such as limestone, cannot become foliated because they do not have flat or elongated grains, and thus cannot be pushed into preferred orientation. Only direct pressure causes preferred orientation, so confining pressure is a way that rocks can be metamorphized but contain the random orientation pattern. Here again, I put on the screen the example of random orientation where the grains are not in line, they're just randomly there. Um, Non-foliated rocks are sometimes classified based on origin, but they are most often classified based on composition. The non-foliated metamorphic rocks this video will look at more closely are marble, quartzite, amphibolite, and hornfelt. Horn Marble is a meta metamorphized limestone or dollar stone comprised mainly of calcite and dolomite. The texture is granoblastic because it does not have any orientation to the grains. It's just random and also banded. Um, you can't see it so much in this example, but when marble is cut, <coughs> you can see a lot of really pretty banded patterns um, and this makes it very popular for decorative work. Um, often because of the way it forms you'll get something like schist mixed in with it kind of uh, which forms the banding. 
Quartzite is a metamorphized sandstone made largely of quartz. It also has a um, granoblastic texture, even though the name is quartz, but this, again, the texture is granoblastic, and again, because it has random orientation and single grains. Amphibolite is a hornblende-rich rock, and it is often derived from basalt or gabbro. It's, again, it's in the non-foliated category, but sometimes it can get a little bit of a schistose appearance, so that's why I've included sometimes schistose in the texture, but it's important to remember that this rock is non-foliated, and by looking at it, you can clearly see that it has random fabric. Lastly, we look at Hornfels. Hornfels is again non-foliated. Um, it's a metamorphic rock produced by the recrystallization of clay-rich rock adjacent to a cooling igneous body, and this process is called contact metamorphism. It has granular texture, it is very fine-grained, and tends to be very, very strong. Um, and it can t it can actually form out of <coughs> excuse me any parent material that is next to a coolies a cool uh, igneous rock as it cools, um, but it most often forms out of a uh, parent material very rich in clay. So this concludes the video my video on metamorphic texture and the classification of metamorphic rocks.